Did you guys to chat for longer? Come on. There is magic in PC gaming. It says, don't just obey the rules. Rewrite them. It says, don't just listen to stories. Inhabit them. It says, don't just accept the limits. Overclock beyond them. It says, don't just play. Play games, revel in them, Un or is it just me? From mountaintops to My dungeons, man. from deep waters to deeper space, from solo quests to mass engagements, there is magic in PC gaming. Let's celebrate that magic together. This is the PC Gaming Show. And now, your host, Sean Plot. Oh, hello, hello, hello to everyone online. Hello to everyone at the Will Turn. Welcome to the PC Gaming Show. Let's go day nine. Yes. Bring the yes. ruckus. My name is day nine. I'm your host today. I am delighted to be here. We have a fantastic show for you this afternoon. First, to all of you who came out to the Wiltern, thanks for joining us. The Wiltern is just a beautiful venue here in Los Angeles. To all of you online on Twitch, thanks for joining us. To those co-streaming partners, hey as well, I'm talking to you, Dropped Frames, great to have you here. And of course, to all the wonderful sponsors that helped make the PC Gaming Show come back again for the fourth straight year. Now, good on you. A shout out to Drop Frames. Now, I'm I not like the them. only host here this year. I have my co-op partner up in the balcony. It's Frankie Ward joining us today. How's it going, Frankie? Hey, Sean. I'm going to be up here in the balcony with a bunch of creative new PC games coming your way. From Warfare's latest update to some offbeat indie gems. Frankie, we are so excited for the show to get started. We have over 30 games we're going to be looking at across the next 90 minutes. So let's get it underway. Our very first title is from Coffee Stain Studios. Their game has absolutely massive construction as well as automation. Let's take a look at Satisfactory. All right, if this makes noise, I apologize so much because I'm about to render out a frame. shown at all. Things are dying on me. Come on, don't die on me. Do me like this. They're really gonna do me like this. Stop stuttering! No, fine. No 60 frames. It's 
<laughs> still stuttering. Joining me on the stage to talk about it is the game director at Coffee Stain Studios. It's Oscar Gilsain. Come here, Oscar. I'll just close After Effects. Clearly, Welcome my computer can't handle stage. it. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Now, Oscar, I just want to begin right away by asking, what is Satisfactory all about? Satisfactory is uh, essentially about building these huge automated factories. This machine uh, was hinted at at the end of the trailer there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and to build that, you need a, a whole ton of parts, uh, which right. you need to build machines that will make them for you. So you'll start out pretty simple um, with a few machines, yeah. and then you'll just expand and expand and expand until you finally you need to start cutting down trees and replace them with like more convenient concrete. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, for people who haven't played this type of game, can you give me examples? of what producing a more advanced resource might look like. Right. Um, after a while, you'll need to create something uh, more advanced, like a computer, for yeah. example. Uh, and you'll, at that point, you'll have some copper stuff set up, you'll wires and cables. But yeah. to make plastic, you need to uh, get some oil. So you need to go out and you need to find this oil, yeah. uh, build some oil pumps and oil refineries, and, and set up a transport um, with self-driving vehicles between the outpost and your factory. Yeah, and I want to talk about that scale because, I, you know, there's a lot of games where you build a house or a small town. How much area are we talking about where all your factories will exist? Oh, th this uh, factory will grow enormous. Uh, the, the main part, which would probably be the biggest, will Audio start spreading not very more, loud. And more and more. Or in some cases, we've had players just building these massive, tall buildings with yeah. factory floor upon factory floor. Game looks kind of cool, including though. Including the um, resources that you need to gather from basically all around the map. Yeah. So you'll have vehicles driving all over. Now, I want to ask about the first-person perspective because these types of games typically are top-down. Why first-person? We, we want it to feel like the, the player is the one building the stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, when, when you build, you've built a bunch of stuff, and you can see these enormous buildings, just structures towering yeah. above you. But also, when you go out and explore, uh, you'll be the one, like, you go through the underbrush and in the jungles yeah. and whatever. I mean, in the trailer, it even looked like there's a lot more to explore, like different environments and biomes. Mm, yeah, yeah. The, the map is, uh, we made a point to make it big and varied. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's about uh, 30 square kilometers in yeah. size. So it's kind of enormous. Wow. You know, one final question. I saw multiple engineers there. How does multiplayer work? Oh, it's a, it's a co-op game. So you'll basically you'll awesome. start up a server and play with your friends. Great. Now, tell us, how do we get our hands on this game? So we got a closed alpha uh, planned in the coming months. Uh, so you can sign up for, uh, for the alpha at satisfactorygame.com. Uh, and yeah, then you'll know. Well, great. Oscar, thanks for joining me on stage once again. That is satisfactorygame.com. Calm. Now, up in the balcony, Frankie, I understand you have our very first indie title of the day. We do indeed, Sean, because here's something we love about the PC platform. It's such fertile ground for creative ideas from small teams. Neo Cab is an emotional survival game set in the future about gig labor, tech disruption, and the experience of being a driver for hire, perhaps the last of your kind. From the brand new indie studio, Chance Agency, let's watch the first gameplay trailer for Neo Cab. Stuttering is driving me nuts. Kinda weird. Super weird.
Now, our next battle genre. Of course, it's E3 2018. What do you expect? We have several Battle Royale games we're going to be talking about today because the Battle Royale format is very simple and very flexible. Players play in an ever-shrinking space until there's one last standing. So developers have already been doing all kinds of different explorations of what this could possibly be. And our very first Battle Royale game that we'll be introducing today has up to 1,000 concurrent players. It's from Automaton Games. Let's look at Maverick's Proving Grounds. I just can't win, man. Can't win. Battle Royale games are all over the place. I just can't get into Battle Royale gameplay. It's just not for me. Props to the people out there that enjoy Battle Royale games, though. You're Joining getting another on the one. stage to talk about Maverick's Proving Grounds is the CEO of Automaton Games. It's James Thompson. Looks like a James, very young welcome. person. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Now, I want to immediately ask, what about prove, or excuse me, Maverick's Proving Grounds distinguishes itself from other Battle Royale games? Yeah, well, as you said, it's a very popular formula, and yeah. you know, that last man standing uh, kind of game type is incredibly compelling by itself, yeah. but Mavericks is really about depth. You know, we've already talked about 400 players before, and we're sort of super excited today to talk about our five-man squad mode being 1,000 players, uh, but really it's, it's about depth as well. It's about the fact that yeah. that environment is even a bigger step, the simulation, and yeah. those elements sort of combining together. Yeah, I, I want to zoom in right on the 1,000 players aspect. How does that really shift the dynamic from the, say, 100 that we're typically used to? Mm. Well, it's really about combining scale with the depth of simulation. So the fact that together, what you actually have is a landscape that means you're making decisions off a lot more information. Yeah, I mean, because you hinted at that twice now. Like, what do you mean by there's a lot more information in the environment for players to process? So take a con concrete example, right? So let's say a player is walking through the map, they'll be leaving footprints, they'll be displacing foliage, like oh, grass okay. bending. Uh, but can you know, siege style gameplay in houses? So that's like a lot of destruction systems that sort of together make the map yeah, there's, much more of a dynamic environment. It's like a recent history of who could have been here. Yeah. Uh, you know, I want to ask about what more is in store for Maverick's Proving Grounds. I understand that this is a lot more out game features than someone might expect. Yeah, so it's not just that session-based gameplay. You enter the game through the capital, which is our sort of persistent social hub. So we draw from the MMORPG side of things. It's really a, right. it's a full world, not just a map. You know, so it's, it's got a persistent game type side to it too. Yeah. But really it's about bringing this all together into something which makes a much richer MMO experience. Now, where can people go to find out more? Well, we've just launched our site right now. So if you're right. interested in signing up for the closed beta, uh, you can do that now at mavericks.gg slash closed hyphen beta. And uh, actually, if you're interested this beta. week, you get special in-game content for free from E3. Well, awesome. And we have only 100,000 slots for the first group signing up. So right on. that will give you some beta access. But cool. I'm sure there are a lot more people than that on the stream. So quickly do that if you're interested in. Well, James, thanks so much for joining us. Once again, that's maverick.gg. Our very next game, 
helps showcase the extraordinary seems power ambitious of modders thousand people it does that's a lot John. on pc we don't just play what's given to us we mod games to make our own experiences and for many developers modding is a way to turn a hobby into a career the forgotten city is the perfect example it's a standalone game that's a reimagining of a wildly successful mod. In fact, the first mod in history to win a National Writers Guild Award. For the first time ever, here's gameplay from The Forgotten City. World exclusive. I'm so sorry you had to find me like this. And worse, that you'll suffer the same fate I did. I've spent a lifetime in this place. An ancient underground city. Its existence long forgotten. Searching for a way out. All I found is a window into the past. If even one person here commits a sin, everyone will die. I tried to set things right, but whatever I did, it took me right back to the beginning. It's all up to you now. Go back. Investigate. Talk to everyone. Help them out if it'll win their trust. Bend the rules as far as you can. Figure out who's responsible for this. And maybe you can do what I never could. Save these people. Save yourself. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Interesting. Coming up on the PC Gaming Show. What's next for Killing Floor 2? And an unannounced game from Tripwire Interactive. And now your host, Sean Plott. Our next game is a blast from the past. It's not a sequel or prequel or remake, but rather an entirely new game altogether. Let's take a look at Stardock's Star Control Origins. Uh-oh, it's a Stardock game. Long ago, Watch yourselves. the singularity formed. Its creators uplifted into something beyond our understanding. These beings, now known as the Lexites, left Earth, traveling to multiple planets in our solar system, before vanishing altogether. This is why we are here. Welcome to Star Control, a state-of-the-art international space agency tasked with the exploration of our solar system and the defense of Earth. Here reside the world's brightest minds and greatest technology, brought together by a strong curiosity to discover the unknown. Help us pioneer the future. Join today. If you value your time, Star Control has accelerated the construction of our new modular deep solar system vessel specifically for this mission. It's it the fastest, most expensive ship humanity has ever made, Captain. So much in those games. I am Chief Viscosity Officer Windu of the Taiwan. The Scribe have evidently received traces of your radio broadcasts themselves. <laughs> Seems like a weird game. A new alien in a delightful new spaceship. You must be humans. We've heard so much about you. Joining me to talk about Star Control is the director of production at Star Dock, Patrick Shaw. Thanks for joining me on stage today, Patrick. Yeah, thanks for having me here. So now just tell us straight up, what is Star Control all about? So Star Control is an open universe action RPG. 
you can visit dozens of aliens, hundreds of different stars, thousands of different unique planets, and you can land on each and every one of them. And when you're driving around the planets, you can jump over canyons, uh, blast critters, and then you can venture out into the solar system and do ship-to-ship -ship combat with hostile aliens. And I, I want to ask, since I know that the story is a big part of this game, with it being open world, how do you make sure that the story still stays as the focus for the player? Yeah, so we're really excited about the story that we prepared for Star Control. It's funny, it's creative, um, but also has some dark, uh, sinister side to it. However, what we're very proud and very excited about is we have an infinite universe. That is, we are fully simulating the entire universe at all times. So even if you're on some huh. podunk little moon in the corner of the universe, the aliens are still moving around the universe doing their own thing, exploring and interacting with each other. So it's not just like at a planet there's the same town whenever you visit it, it depends on how the simulation has driven it forward. Right, exactly. So this is the, this uh, infinite universe is the glue that connects my story, my adventure to the larger open galaxy. That's awesome. Now I know modding is going to be a big part of Star Control Origins. How does modding work? So what's your favorite science fiction show? Probably Firefly. Yeah, so what would you think of making Firefly season two? Shit, that's a lot of pressure, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> well, You're putting me on the spot on stage right now, yeah. We have you know, a week to do it, so. Um, but anyways, in Star Control Origins, you can create your own ships, your own planets, your own galaxies. You can package up your adventures and share them with your friends online. So someone else can take care of Firefly Season 2. That's up to you. Now, last thing I want to ask about is how multiplayer works. Right, so in the game we have ship-to-ship -ship combat and that turned about to be so popular in our early testing, they're like, we should make this our, it, a separate gameplay mode. So we did, we called it Fleet Battles. So you can create your own ships, you build them out of different pieces and parts, you attach different weapons and defenses, and then you go online to play them. You can either play local multiplayer, two people on the same machine, or online, ranked or online. Play. Where can people go to pick up Star Control Origins? Well, right now, Star Control Origins is available for pre-order on GOG and Steam. Well, lovely. Guys, definitely be sure to head over to StarControlGame.com and check them out on Steam and GOG as well. And one more thing, we are happy to announce at the PC Gamer Show that uh, Star Control Origins is launching on September 20th, 2018. Look for it on September 20th. Seems like a solid game. Now, our next game was PC Gamer's favorite game from E3 last year. It is Hunt Showdown from Crytek. Let's take a look at what's coming for Hunt Showdown just after E3. I think I remember them showing footage of this last year, and it was definitely very interesting. The heck? By now? I am here with Guy from Skydance, who's here to tell me why fighting in massive mech suits is not about to go out of fashion any time soon. Guy, now Hellfire, in fact, sorry, Archangel was originally a single player narrative game, but Hellfire, this new edition, what changes is that gonna make? Well, players really loved the single player narrative, but they all kept telling us the same thing. They said, we really want it multiplayer and we want it off rails. And we kind of thought, that's a completely different game, <laughs> but let's give it a shot. Uh, and so we got a crack team together. Uh, they put something really special. We got four maps, we got six different mechs, tons of weapons where you could just blast through the environment and other mechs alike. And it's really just an amazing experience. You can zip around in your mech, you can tower over others. It's just something special that and I can try right now. And when is this coming out of early access? So you just said we can try it right now, but you've got the full version launching soon, right? Correct, yeah, it's coming out in July 17th. Uh, but you could try it right now if you want an early access, help us iron out the kinks and uh, break some mechs along the process. 
Uh, I am no good at ironing out kinks, as I think people at home can see, Guy. But as a heavy mech woman, I can't wait for you to be my light mech wingman in that two. That was a pretty good season. joke. So let's Gotta give her props a for that one. look at Archangel Hellfire. Let's do it. Our next title is one I've been looking for. I was hoping to, to get a little bit more out of that. Some time. It's from the makers of Sherlock Holmes, and it's a delightful looking Lovecraftian mystery. It's called The Sinking City, and joining me to talk about it is the community manager at Frogwares, Sergei Oganisian. Welcome, Sergei. Thanks for joining me today. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you've earned a handshake. Yeah, you Welcome nailed that pronunciation. I love that you lie to me so kindly. You know, I want to ask right away, The Sinking City, you know, there's a lot of open world, third person type games. What makes The Sinking City different from what a player might expect? Well, I mean, The Sinking City is an open world action investigation game inspired by Lovecraft. And we believe that these three elements already make the game pretty unique. And you know, when I say that you can be a detective in a, in a world, in a supernatural world full Slow of mystery, down, man. and you know, cosmic fear, Take like, time. I really mean it, because Breathe. investigations are really at the core of The Sinking City. Yeah, I mean, I know there's a lot of games in the open world genre that are focused on action, but you say investigation is at the core. What, what are investigation mechanics? What does it look like? So the first thing you should know right off the bat is that we are not going to offer any hand holding for the player. We will not give you any clear objectives in your diary or you know markers on the map telling you where to go or what to do. It's actually up to you to figure that out. Instead, yeah. we will give you information, you know, hints, evidence, like clues, crime scenes to examine, like people to talk to, suspects to question. And we will ask you in return to use your wits and your intuition to, you know, experiment with your findings, you know, maybe like find a way how to progress. And what you should also know is that finding these clues will not only help you understand what's going on and, you know, uh, yeah. get a better understanding of the world and its people, but it will also help you maybe change the course of your investigation. You know, you mentioned the world itself. I mean, the footage that I've seen through the years has just been absolutely beautiful. Talk to me about the world that we're in and what investigation is at the core. So the game takes place in this fictional city of Oakmont in the state of Massachusetts. You know, the city which is flooded. There's a terrible crazy. disaster going on, which has claimed like thousands of lives. And also, like, it seems like it awakened frightening monsters, which now yeah. roam the streets of Oakmont. You know, people that live in the city, they are very different, like different social classes, uh, gangs, cultists, poor people, rich people, but they are all yeah. united by fear. You know, they are all afraid, maybe except for the cultists, of course. They are all <laughs> afraid that, uh, you know, for their lives because of the flood, because of the monsters. And you know, we actually want to understand what's going on. We want to understand what lies be behind this ostensibly supernatural uh, flood. And what's even funny is that while everybody's afraid, nobody wants to leave. But this is kind of a different story. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, we've talked a little bit about the story world and how it's inspired by Lovecraft. What about the game mechanics? You've mentioned the sanity mechanic in the past. Indeed, we do have a sanity mechanic which, which directly impacts the gameplay. You know, when our hero is under a lot of stress, when he sees like something supernatural, something disturbing, or even when he's making a choices in the story which he's not comfortable with making, uh, you know, he will begin to lose his sanity. Uh, he's like, he will start to have hallucinations, he will start to hear distorted sounds, yeah. which will allow the player to understand that something is actually going wrong. Maybe we need to, you know, step back and do something about that. As of right now, we're still finding in this mechanic because we are still looking you know for the sweet spot between yeah. impact on the gameplay and impact on the story since we're almost out of time i still just have to ask what are the sweet monsters that we're going to get to see in the game oh we have different kinds of monsters we have different kinds of archetypes you know with different abilities and you know we actually give you tools the game is not about fighting monsters investigation is the right. core of the game but we give you tools to defend yourself so we give you weapons we give you skills we give you even so certain like traps in return, we ask you that yeah. you make a decision because the game is about making a decision. Uh, ammunition is scarce and you will have to adjust your tactics accordingly. So I know a lot of people have all sorts of questions about what the game is like. Where can they go to find out more information? Uh, so if you're hungry for more, you can always follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, this is where we post our updates regularly. Facebook, The Sinking City Game, YouTube, uh, Frogwares. Uh, so go there and yeah. like, this is definitely the place to go if you wanna learn more. Well, I'm super excited personally to see how it turns out. Thanks for joining me on stage, Sergey. The Sinking City. That game looks interesting.
Now, our next game is a PC title that has only gotten better over the last few years, and I'm always excited to hear what they have in store. Frankie is up on the balcony with the developers of Warframe. Talk to me, Frankie. I'm not well, even a, a Lovecraftian fan either. Some of the most devoted they looked communities in gaming, and one of the best undoubtedly belongs to Warframe. Last year, the game got its first open world update, Plains of Eidolon, and the next epic cinematic quest is called The Sacrifice. And we've got the exclusive launch trailer for you. Dang. Never played Warframe. Heard mixed things about it. Megan Everett, community manager at Digital Summit Streams, joins me now. Megan, tell me more about The Sacrifice. So The Sacrifice is the latest installment of our cinematic quest. It continues a story that we started in The Second Dream, continued with The War Within, and then Apostasy Prologue. So at the end of last year, we kind of shattered some hearts and uh, left them with a bit of a plot twist. And I'm not going to spoil it for people who want to maybe catch up. Uh, but what I can say is that, obviously, from the trailer that you saw, the wait for Umbra, the three-year wait, the Umbra Warframe is finally over. Uh, the creepy guy at the end of the trailer there, Ballas, plays a pretty big role in this quest. And uh, again, not going to spoil a lot, but I can say that it's coming this week on PC. And you guys are actually currently waiting, well, for, as well as the update, you're working towards tenor right now. Yes, so it's going to be another big year for us and I'm really excited for it. Well, let's take a look at last year's event to get an idea of what Tenacon is all about. What do you think the mega reveal at Tenno Live is going to be? Can you tell me you think about this, this Umber thing that's maybe going on or whatever? Pretty amazing, like it's a whole new direction for Warframe and all this. You got all these other games coming out, but this one's free. When's 2018 happening? Get it started. Given that the community knows you as Auntie Megan, oh God. it must be huge for you to be at Tenacon. Tenacon is really special for really everyone that works at Digital Extremes. The developers pour their heart and soul into what we do for TennoCon. And I know for me, it was literally like the best day of my entire career. I know Rebecca, our community director at home, was watching. Um, but last year, when we did the Plains of Eidolon, you know, open world expansion reveal, uh, Rev and I were actually doing that as a live demonstration in front of everyone. And we had practiced it for months and it went as flawlessly as we could have ever hoped for. And we actually, like, as people were cheering, it's pitch black on stage. Rev and I look at each other, and we just kind of fist pump and both started crying because we didn't crash the demonstration. Uh, so if you, <laughs> if you watch Tenno Live this year, if you're there, uh, you can definitely probably count on some tears and some emotions because it's, it's a really big day for us. So basically, bring tissues, right? Bring tissues for yourself, for me, for <laughs> everyone involved, because there will be some tears probably. But um, if you can't get to Tenacon because unfortunately it is sold out, how can you watch it online? So on twitch.tv slash Warframe, you can definitely check it out. And uh, PC Gamer is also hosting as well on their Facebook and Twitter. And you get free stuff by watching Twitch? You do. So if you want to link your uh, Warframe account to your Twitch account, and all you have to do is watch and you get some free stuff. Fantastic. So that's happening from July 7th, and you'll be able to watch Tenacon Live through PC Gamer's Twitch channel and the Facebook page. Thank you, Auntie Megs. Oh. Sean, it's over to you. Thank you, Frankie, and thank you, Warframe. The next name is one I grew up with, Sega. They've become a prolific publisher of Japanese games known for their fully featured ports, especially beloved by this guy on the left. <laughs> Sega's bringing shining resonance both to PC and console the same day, and Shenmue is gonna be coming later this year. They have all sorts of games coming up. Wasn't that Let's delayed till next year? Sega's got in store. Wasn't Shenmue delayed until 2019? Could be wrong. Well, unless they're, oh, if they're talking about the collection, never mind.
I got Valkyrie uh, Chronicles. Uh, I haven't beat it. I should really get around to doing that someday. Considered uh, getting Shining Residence or Resonance Reframe. Don't think I'm going to, but there's a possibility. I forgot, this, uh, this bot will be claimed on YouTube. Just a matter of time. Yakuza Zero is available for pre-order right now and will be releasing that back. on Steam in early August. We hope you've been enjoying the show thus far. We have so much more great stuff to come. Let's see what's coming up at this year's PC Gaming Show. Coming up on the PC Gaming Show, a new publisher reveals three new games and the first ever gameplay footage of Overkill's The Walking Dead. And now your host, Sean Plott. And I'm back. <laughs> Our next guest is a regular here at the PC Gaming Show, having attended I all that, that four too. years. Frankie's with him up in the it, balcony. It was kind of funny. It's Tripwire. Sean, if you are anything like me, you probably need to let off steam every once in a while. And I personally can't think of a better way to do it than by kicking back and tearing up a load of monstrous enemies. It's kind of either that or pushing the office photocopier out of the window. And I, for one, prefer the option that keeps me and everyone here in a job. With that in mind, I am thrilled to welcome Bill Monk from Killing Floor 2 back to E3. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> Got a lot of fans in the audience oh, yeah, still. Yeah. Listen to that applause. Yep. They all want to know what the latest from Tripwire and Killing Floor 2 is. Yep, we've been really busy working on Killing Floor, and we got some. Uh, we got four major updates that are coming out this year. The first one we dropped in March, and we're getting ready to drop the next one really it's soon. coming tomorrow, Bill. What's involved? Yeah, so we're bringing the summer sideshow back, but this time we're mixing circus freaks with steampunk in a really fun, exciting way. And we have a really cool new uh, system that we're adding. It's called the Weapon Upgrade System. And with this, there's 73 different weapons that we have in our game, and each one you can uh, upgrade it and make it viable for late play. So it really adds a lot of creativity to your loadout. So I'm really excited to get that in people's hands. So you can make your boy, your boy guns big. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Good. Well, thank you so much. I wonder much if the stuttering is on today, Twitch's though. end. Let's take a look at the trailer for Treacherous Skies Summer Sky Show. Seems unlikely, but it's possible. Welcome aboard the HMS Queen Victoria, ladies and gents. Ringley de Lockhart speaking to you from, well, someplace very safe, yes. You helped me escape that fray at my beloved Steamland, but now I need your help once again. I've got to get to my island in the channel. Now, now, listen up. I don't know how, but these blasted circus freaks followed us on board. I think it's time to put on a show yes, of daring deeds and horrendous bloodshed. 
For me, my mechanical children have turned against me. <laughs> Blasted traitors! Careful, lads! They're tough, even removing the head will put these rebellious robots down. <laughs> but take part, lads and lasses. I have invented some new toys. The Doomstick! Four barrels are better than two! The Static Strikers! A shockingly stylish set of gauntlets! And the M99 Sniper Rifle! And finally, there's a last-minute addition to the crew. What's this woman go? Seems Mrs. Foster negotiated her way on board and is set on giving Zen... You won't like the angry. ...the business! And remember, we'll see you on the airship! Fossey, joke for you. Optician says my eyes are okay. I say, then how do you explain my husband? <laughs> now, as is tradition, wow. the content that you just saw will be available tomorrow, including a free weekend for PC this weekend. Definitely check it out with Killing Floor 2. But that's not all that Tripwire has. I have the president of Tripwire himself, John Gibson, on stage. John, welcome back again. Thanks, Sean. Pleasure to be here. Now, I understand that Tripwire is stepping into also doing publishing. What does that entail? That's right. So, Sean, it's really challenging for developers right now with the thousands of games that are coming out every year. Yeah. It's really hard to get noticed. Mm -hmm. And then you have the traditional publishing deals. So, we're giving developers fair deals. We're going to be helping them rise above that noise so they can get noticed. And because of our experience developing our own games and publishing our own yeah. games, we're going to help them with marketing, funding, mentoring, feedback to help them succeed. Yeah, I mean, the game that we have on screen is one of those games. This is Road Redemption. That is right. I'm happy to announce that we're going to be publishing Road Redemption. We're going to be helping them grow and succeed even more on Steam, but also bring the franchise beyond Steam. Now, I know today you have a world-exclusive new game. Hasn't been announced we yet. We do. Nobody knows. Or we roll the trailers. I wonder if you give me a little bit of a tease. Yeah, so we're working with the team at Blindside Games, mm -hmm. uh, and they're led by Alex Quick. Oh, yeah, right. So if you're familiar with the Killing Floor universe, you know Alex Quick was the modder that created the original Killing Floor mod, which Tripwire worked with Alex to bring commercial. And then Alex went off, assembled his own team, made the yeah. game Depth, which was sharks and humans fighting each other. Very, very successful. And now it's come full circle. We're working with Alex again. It's 100% not me. His all new game to market. Well, let's take. Take a look at it right now. World exclusive, new up. Gonna refresh Beaches it. Beaches are wide, a place filled with southern charm, where the water is as warm as the welcome. So come feel the wind in your sails. Kick back and relax. Enjoy the local cuisine. Your dream vacation is waiting for you here on the Gulf Coast. Go to maneatergame.com now to book your vacation. Operators are standing by. <laughs> so, so, hey, John, so you get to play as the shark. You are the shark. <laughs> what? This is an open world action RPG where you play as a shark, <laughs> or as we like to call it, a shark PG. Oh, nice. Okay, so. So do you like upgrade and improve the shark? Is there like skill trees? You do. There is a shark skill tree. <laughs> really? <laughs> there is a full single player campaign. You eat your way through it. You get bigger teeth. You can jump out of the water and snatch people off piers and all of that fun stuff. I, I didn't realize this was a power fantasy I needed so badly. <laughs> but are there laser beams? Now, where can people go to get more information about it? They can go to maneatergame.com. All right, I doubt anyone will forget that here. <laughs> That's maneatergame.com. John, thanks so much for joining me on stage. And once My again, pleasure. all the content that Tripwire <laughs> showcased earlier about Killing Floor 2 and Road Redemption will be playable here at E3. Definitely be sure to check it out. Coming up next, Frankie has a whole slew of unannounced games. Frankie. Cheers, Sean. Man eater looking tasty there, and I can't believe they named a game after my favorite weekend activity. 
And these are the heart of PC Gaming. And next up is a brand wow. new challenge of wow. for the very first time, <laughs> releasing one of them, Behave Yourselves Audience, today. So let's take a look. What are you doing, Frankie? This trailer's off to an extremely poor start. I'm glad the ring's self-aware. <laughs> I don't even. I really don't, who names their development studio Untitled Publisher? Or their publishing studio Untitled Publisher? Come on guys. We can get more creative than that. Definite Mega Man influence here. Uh, there's also Metroid. I, I, I see the Metroid as well. And a variety of other games like Contra, yada yada. look like must plays and overwhelm the final game of the bunch is available on steam right now with a special launch discount so make you sure you check that out after the show and if you're at e3 this week head over to the pc gamer corner of the facebook booth inside the south hall to give overwhelm a try right next up it's time for us all to take a holiday and where better than a virtual resort with some truly spectacular wildlife Back again this year, our friends of the show, Frontier Developments, with a unique take on the park management genre. I am, of course, talking about Jurassic World Evolution. The long-awaited game is out tomorrow and lets you build your own dinosaur-stuffed tourist trap. What could possibly go wrong? Unleash the Goldblum! You think that things are going to turn out differently, huh? Well, the ones before you did too. Because they believed that they were in control. And control... Well, here's the thing. Humanity is desperate for it. We are seduced by it. Deceived by the illusion of it. But we never really possess it. 
because if there's anything that chaos theory has taught us, it's that nature is on its own course. And when we interfere, when humanity tries to put nature into orderly boxes, chaos destroys them. And what makes us such unique creatures is knowing the scope and power of what we're up against and still believing that we can win. I know, however, what I would predict. That was a nice narration. For a game that, well, I, so I guess if it's coming out tomorrow, game. they don't need to show gameplay. Our next title is from Insomniac, who've been making amazing games for years, and they're going to try to take their expertise and answer the question, how do you make an open world game in VR? Let's take a look at their upcoming game, Stormland. really have anything against this game. I'm I'm cool with it. At least what I saw. Joining me to talk about Stormland is the chief creative officer at Insomniac Games. Join me in welcoming Chad Desern. Hey Chad, welcome to the stage. Thank you. I want to start right away and ask, what is this game all about? Well, in Stormland, you play as an android gardener, and uh, an entity called the Tempest uproots your habitat and shatters your android body. So you've got to travel to a civilization above the Thunderheads to repair yourself and save your friends. And I want to ask what open world means in VR. Well, for us, it's about giving the player the ability to explore the world freely 
with a set of Android movement abilities that are designed yeah. to give you complete agency. Yeah, because that's always a huge question I have is how does motion work in any VR title? Yeah, well, um, in Stormland, you can do things like fly just above the slipstream with your outstretched Android hands. Yeah. Um, you can shoot a laser into the cloud surface and then make a ramp, kick off of that, um, climb up a cliffside, like literally launching yourself with your synthetic Android strength and then like push off and glide back down using your hands to control your descent. Just it's massive freedom of movement, yeah. Th th that's it, it's this set of mechanics that are designed together to work fluidly so that um, movement feels exhilarating yeah. and uh, you, you can kind of take the world at your own pace with it. I'm curious why VR for this type of title? There, there are a series of things that we're doing with Stormland that, that we could only do in VR. Um, it's about the, the expressiveness of having tracked head and hands yeah. and how we use that for combat, how we use it for movement, um, even things like scavenging technology to attach like it to your body. To like you look down, you get a new piece of tech, and you you attach it right <laughs> into your arm, and then you know suddenly you've got the ability to harness electricity yeah. or cloak yourself. Might as well just say because why cool not? Android abilities. I mean, the, the art is just beautiful, and the footage that we've seen. I wonder if you can talk to me a little bit about the world and what it means for it to be ever changing. Yeah, that's that, that's a really good question. So that entity called the Tempest rearranges everything every single week so that we present the player with new playgrounds of movement and, and combat and scavenging yeah. and you never know what you're going to discover so every single island you find yeah. has the potential to ha hide an enemy stronghold or a network of underground caverns or brand new tech to scan. that's awesome yeah. Now, I gotta ask, where can we go for more information? Well, um, you can uh, stay tuned uh, by watching um, the, uh, the Facebook and Twitter with um, at Stormland VR, or you can check us out at insomniac.games. I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks for joining me, Chad. Once again, oculus.com slash Stormland for more information. Frankie's up in the balcony with our next absolutely gorgeous looking indie title. It really is, Sean, because next up we've got a first look at a new game from publisher Raw Fury, a neo-noir detective drama featuring a Paris cabbie who finds himself drawn into a world of crime. Sacre Roddy Bleu. Yes, I speak French. I can't wait for this one, so let's take a ride with the trailer. You know, I gotta admit, a lot of these um, game reveals are very formulaic. They kind of start the same and they end usually with the same question, um, mostly not even worded differently. They need to change up the formula just a little bit more. If you like that last game, you'll definitely love our next one. It's from the exact same publisher, Raw Fury. It's an open world narrative focused game with an incredible art style. Let's take a look at Sable. I think we got a brief glimpse of this on the Xbox conference, and the art style for this one looks crazy compared to, uh, like the environment. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's the uh, like a lighting thing, but this game seems like it it does some pretty cool things, art wise.
Joining me to talk about Sable is pretty much the entire core development team on stage. It's Daniel Feinberg and Greg Kithriotis. I want to immediately ask, what kind of game is Sable? What can we expect? Uh, Sable is an open world desert exploration game. It's not a game about combat or about leveling up. It's a game about solitude and it's a game about exploration. Uh, you play as Sable, a girl leaving her home uh, to explore this mm -hmm. world filled with monumental architecture, fallen spaceships, and you'll travel around on your hover bike learning about the people, the culture, and the history of this uh, world. And you know, I, I, I talked about it before, I think this art style is amazing. Where's the origins of this? So we were really heavily inspired by the clear lines style of French and Belgian comics. Mm -hmm. as well as Japanese animation, um, particularly Studio Ghibli. So um, we really want to feel our players to feel the same sense of wonder that you get from watching one of their films. And so from yeah. the very beginning, we, we knew that we really needed to nail the visual style. And uh, yeah, so we put a lot of time and sort of effort into our right. rendering system. Uh, and yeah, we're really pleased to be able to show it to everyone. Yeah. And I mean, I know that you two consist of most of the core development, the, the art and the programming. What about the music that was in that trailer? Yeah, so that was a new track by Japanese Breakfast. Oh, was, yeah, the t-shirt. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah, right. so she, uh, Michelle, um, she is doing the soundtrack for the game. Um, Japanese Breakfast is one of my favorite bands right now. Uh, it's incredible to have well, her I mean, it, on board. It all just came together so beautifully in the trailer. And I know that you guys are really regular about updating you know, blogs, sharing what's going on with the development. Where can people go to find more? Uh, so they can go to our Twitter account, ShedworksReg and ShedworksDan, or to SableGame.com. Lovely gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me. Once again, the name of the game is Sable. Our next title is one that has been in development, even showing up in our very first PC gaming show. It's Cloud Imperium Games still hard at work on their title, Star Citizen. Let's see what they have in store. Wow, you're gonna show this game, man. This game's never gonna come out. What are you guys doing? Get out of here with that. My goodness. Just... suck a -boo, man. Don't we just love how we see no gameplay for a freaking game that raised millions, like hundreds of millions of dollars, and we're getting cinematic trailers instead of gameplay? Come on. Will this game ever be released? Ever. Look at that, there's still an alpha. Coming up on the PC gaming show. All new gameplay footage of Just Cause 4. A closer look at The Walking Dead, the final season. All new gameplay footage of Hitman. And now your host, Sean Plott. As we do each year at the PC Gaming Show, in addition to talking about games, we're also gonna talk about some of the upcoming hardware trends. To join me in talking about it is the senior brand manager from Acer, it's Eric Ackerson. Thanks for joining me up here, Eric. Sean, really excited to be here. Now, I, I just wanna straight up ask, what are the, some of the big trends that consumers can be expecting right now? Well, right now we're developing some new products, particularly in the display space. We wanna take the experience to the next level. To help with that, one of our new products is the Predator X27. It's an incredible gaming display. For instance, it's 4K and 120 hertz refresh. The users can overclock to 144. But what really takes it over to the next level is the inclusion of G-Sync HDR. 
Yeah, now I hear a lot about HDR. Can you explain a little more in detail what that is and what that means? Well, there's a, quite a bit that goes into it, but uh, for the purpose of this conversation, the fact that there are 384 individual backlit zones, so the backlighting can be individually controlled, really bright, very dark, it makes a, a better contrast on screen. Each of them are individually controlled. The brightness of the screen is far above a typical display. Typical, you're looking at 300 to 400 nits. We're looking at 600 with the Predator X27 with a max of 1,000 nits. And you know, some of the titles that were showcased uh, just now, there's a wide variety of some photorealistic, some with a really iconic art style. How does HDR contribute to that big range we see in gaming? Well, one of the big things that helps is the color gamut that's available with these displays. We're able to do 99% of the Adobe color gamut, so it's better representing the vision of the art director. Yeah, and some of the games that you see on screen that support HDR, Mass Effect Andromeda, Far Cry 4, Nino Kuni 2. Uh, again, you won't see them in HDR right now unless you have an HDR monitor. It doesn't work that way. We can't just stream it to you. But, you know, it brings me to one of my next questions about PC gamers tend to have a huge range of possible budgets. What are the different sort of products to look for at those price ranges? Well, I mean, we cover the, the gamut from uh, very simple and to the point to high performance esports products or multi-view surround, multi-display products, but we also go really crazy sometimes. We decide, we put our engineers to the test, what can you do if you have yeah, no yeah. limit? So one of the projects we've worked on is something called the Predator 21X. This is a 21 inch curved screen uh, laptop with a mechanical keyboard How do you and close two it graphics cards. You Science, we have materials, <laughs> we, did, we did a really good thing. But you know what, to, to be serious, not just to joke, Great we question. actually have to ship this with a Pelican case to protect the laptop and it sells yeah. for nine thousand dollars and we sold every single unit we could make so we cover every spectrum of gaming you know you brought up this predator laptop you brought up the predator monitors at the start of this segment where can people go to hear more about or even pick one up once they stop being sold out. So the, that's, the good news is that we're shipping now. Our customers, partners are selling them. The bad news is a few have already sold out of this new Predator X27 monitor. I believe Micro Center is still in stock. Amazon will be in stock again. $9,000. So joining me on stage, Eric. Frankie is awaiting in the balcony with our very a next lot of money. title. The PC has always been the platform for crazy ideas. In our next game, Genesis Alpha 1, you build and manage a space vessel, farm resources, deal with terrifying alien infestations, and explore a vast, randomly generated universe. Oh, and you can take DNA from the aliens you encounter across the galaxy, splice them with members of your crew to create new life forms. Just a typical day at the office. Let's take a look. Greetings, Commander. You have been sent to Quadrant Alpha 1. The mission is to find a new home for the crew on board of this ship. Expand your ship and explore the galaxy for resources and interesting new life forms. Feel free to experiment with DNA and alien abilities to maximize crew efficiency. Ready your weapons. This game could have potential. That could have potential. Now, if you didn't catch the pre-show quiz, you might be wondering who my buddy is. Well, this, ladies and gentlemen, is Webster from Drake's Cakes, one of the PC gaming show's sponsors this year. And he's got a cool competition for you, the Drake's Cakes Packs Giveaway. Oh yes, PAX is a gathering of PC and tabletop games, concerts, panels, exhibits and tournaments. It's like a four day LAN party, festival, workshop and concert rolled into one. The very lucky winner will enjoy a trip to PAX West, including two tickets. Again with the hair joke. Trip to Seattle. She's, she's so killing it over you, there. Hit me up on those dates because I am free. Webster, my man duck, this is very generous of you indeed. And by entering, guys, you will get a discount code to get your hands on some delicious Drake's Cakes available on Amazon. 
And if you're at E3 itself, don't forget you can meet Webster in person at the E3 Concourse Walkway, where he'll be giving away drink swag and tasty treats all week. So if you see him, give him a fist bump on my behalf. I'll take one now. Thank you very much, Webster. So if you have ever dreamt of spending a weekend knee deep in one of Earth's it's best way too hot to be wearing one of those things, man. Visit pcgamer.com forward slash drinks cakes and enter now for a chance to win and hang out with Webster. All right, Webster, all this hosting has got me a bit peckish. How about we look at a trailer for the next edition of Clay Entertainment's beloved survival series, Don't Starve, Hamlet. Never played this game. Don't know if I ever will. But the art style is interesting. Our next title is the next installment in a series that never fails to make me laugh. It's Just Cause 4, and they have a brand new engine to bring the level of delicious insanity one notch up. Let's take a look at what the Apex engine in Just Cause 4 can really do. Always gotta deliver that disclaimer for some reason. Audio levels for this conference haven't been very uh, uniform. The talking's really low and the gameplay's kind of loud. Case and point. <laughs> Jesus. Joining me to talk about it on stage now. From Avalanche Studios, it's Francesco and, or excuse me, Francesco Antolini and Adam Davidson. Gentlemen, welcome. Talk to me about the tornado. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic, isn't it? So it's uh, a very nice uh, piece of tech. It's not just beautiful, but thanks to Apex, it's also a bit boy that actually works. It's fully physicalized. Yeah. This means that it's roaming the world wreaking havoc and uh it's not it's not just like a background way. piece it's no, actually impacting no, no. the world this is you. just cause man you go there and you play with it yeah <laughs> you know throughout the trailers that i've seen it seems to be a lot of different environments that are available throughout Can you talk to me about those yeah i mean uh one of the most important things to us with this installment of just cause was bringing a lot more variety into the game and that extends to a lot of things but certainly the biomes of the game so instead of one kind of region of like say southern Italy like we had last time, now you have lush rainforests, deserts, uh, grassland, and even alpine biomes, uh, all of which you know are rendered beautifully with the new Apex engine. Now something that's very important to me is some of my favorite features from Just Cause 3. Can you talk to me about like the wingsuit and the grappling hooks? Like are those coming back in Just Cause 4? Everything you love from Just Cause 3 is back. Good. But Good. everything is also it's just better. There's more to do, more to discover. For example, the grappling hook is completely custom customizable. Uh, the combat model has been completely reworked, redesigned, enhanced, or new weapon, mm -hmm. new enemies, uh, new AI. Uh, we've got extreme weather, 
that yeah. interacts with I mean, Kraplinuk does, and yeah, uh, Parachute. Right? The wind that we saw from yes. the tornado, is it just yes. like basic wind effects also get incorporated as well? Again, it just goes, so nothing, just an effect. So if there is wind, it's <laughs> physics, and acts with your Parachute, Kraplinuk. So and great. The rest, yeah. Well, where can people go to get some, we'll call it first-hand footage of what Just Cause 4 can deliver? Uh, they can check it out at justcause.com forward slash E3 in, uh, for three days. That's right. Believe it or not, E3 hasn't started yet. <laughs> Starts tomorrow, so yep. June 12th through 14th. You can check it out. Thanks so much for joining Thanks us on stage. I look forward to the hilarity of Just Cause 4. Now, our next title is one of my all-time favorite IPs. I can't wait for Frankie to talk to you about The Walking Dead. This is where I bow. Overkill can't watch zombie games. Starbreeze are the creators of I Payday will and Payday 2. Therefore, it goes without saying that these studios are some of the most talented makers of cooperative shooters. And their next one is set in a familiar but new apocalyptic Washington, D.C. Here's the first gameplay footage for Overkill's The Walking Dead. And keep your eyes peeled for the release date at the end. so many things. Husbands and wives, doctors and teachers, writers and architects. But when the world ended, all that ended too. Every day we fight for more than survival. We fight to build a new life. Alrighty, perfect timing on my return. And I have more good news for fans of The Walking Dead. Overkill's game for The Walking Dead, of course, coming soon. But we have a second, completely different Walking Dead game that we're getting the chance to talk about right ah. now. This is Telltale's <laughs> The Walking Dead, the final season. At least this Joining one's on more cartoony. I might be able to handle writer, this one. James Windler and the voice of Clementine herself, Melissa Hutchison. I know I'm a pansy, guys. Don't, don't judge. John, thank you for joining me on the stage. Our pleasure. Thank you. Now, I, I want to ask right away for you know people who've played through the first three seasons of The Walking Dead. In terms of the gameplay, what's some of the familiar and what's some of the new? Okay, so for people who don't know Telltale, um, we are a story-based company. Um, we do we focus on narrative. Uh, we've had our roots in um, the, the old school point and click adventure games, but we've developed our own cinematic style and um, almost a signature um, mechanic, like our choice wheel. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's all familiar. Um, that should, you know, the choices branch the narrative. Um, what's new this year, we have um, like, traditionally like combat and action, um, we've done with QTEs. Yeah, yeah, like swipes and, and button mashes and all of that. This year, um, with the final season, we're, we're um, introducing uh, segments of unscripted combat. Yeah, see, we see some of this right here. Yeah, so Clem probably just brutalizes on me there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Of course she is. And you, oh yeah, so we also have like the, um, the orbital cam, like the over the shoulder camera. Um, so that's yeah. like offering our players um, uh, opportunities to explore our environments, which you can also see from the B-roll, the right. um, is like they're looking really, really good oh, with this yeah. graphic, bla um, graphic black art style that we're employing. Yeah, because in the previous games it was much more of a directed camera from scene to scene, but now you can really sort of explore the environment on your own. Absolutely, yeah, and yeah. Now I want to ask, about the story. I mean, Telltale games always have that as the central feature. Where does The Walking Dead, the final season, 
start off? Okay, so it starts, um, we've, you know, Clementine has been on the road for a long time. We are post time jump in the comics. Mm -hmm. um, she's been on the road, she's traveling um, with a, a AJ, who is an orphan boy, yeah. um, who is the closest thing that she has to family. Um, but they're reaching the end of it. They are like running out of steam on the road. It's like proving to be untenable. Um, so um, the final season, Clementine uh, discovers a, a, a school, a secluded school, um, where there are no adults, um, and essentially sees that this might be a place that they could call home. Yeah, and what are the sort of challenges that she's going to face throughout the season? Oh, all kinds of challenges, yeah. yeah like zombie threat all the time. Tough. Yeah, of course. Um, and then there's always the external threat, like the, at some point there are gonna be adults coming in um, representing external threats that she's gonna have to deal with. Now, Melissa, I, I wanna ask what your experience has been like, because it's rare to have you know, a, a voice actress journey along with yeah. a character in a multi-year journey. I mean, how long ago was the first? Uh, it was, recording that you did? Well, I, it was 2012, but we might have even started in 2011. I don't know. I'd... We're not going to do math on it. Yeah, That's always a bad idea. That's not happening right now. Um, it's been a long time, and it's not only just playing one character, it's actually been aging with her, growing with her, and uh, falling deeper and deeper in love with her, and, uh, you know, starting as this young child who's, you know, as playing as Lee, it's your job to protect her, and then organically moving through all these seasons, and now yeah. you're playing as Clementine. I mean, really, this is a fan-driven game, so this final season is for the fans, and, you know, you're going to be playing as Clementine and protecting oh, AJ. Oh, guy looks like and, he really uh, wants to talk. near and dear to my heart, and, yeah. I mean, yeah. how do you feel about the fact that this is the end? Ah, well, <laughs> well, I mean, it's bittersweet. I'm super sad. I'm super psyched. Uh, you know, I'm, of course, it'll, it'll be sad to end her journey, yeah. but uh, I, I'm really looking forward. Obviously, I'm surrounded by talent with Telltale Games, and I have no doubt that the writers and the creatives are going to crush it. So, sad but happy? It's all very confusing. I'm a very confused <laughs> human right now. Let's just put it that way. Well, I'm someone who's played through all of the Telltale Walking Dead games. I would love to know when the final season is coming out. August 14th. Um, yeah, we ship August 14th, and it's available for pre-order right now. Be sure to check it out. Thank you so much for joining me on stage Thank today. You. Once again, that's thewalkingdeadgame.com. <laughs> or you can find it on Steam as well. And for our next title, Frankie, we're going to head back to you on the balcony. Next up, have I got a treat for you. Coming straight out of Finland from Nonna Games is a magical action roguelike that asks, is that a wand in your pocket? Or are you just trying to kill me? Don't let the retro art style fool you. Noita is set in a procedurally generated world where every pixel is physically simulated. Let's take a look. I think we saw this game before, and this is crazy. Super crazy. Oh my gosh. Weirdly enough, I'm getting Terraria vibes. That's new. Wish list Our next title now. is one that's very near and dear to my heart, as it is the spiritual successor to one of my favorite childhood games, Theme Hospital. Joining me to talk about it are the two founders of Two Point Studios. To talk about Two Point Hospital, join me in welcoming Dr. Webley and Dr. Carr. Wow. Great suits. I mean, I gotta ask, as two fully trained medical professionals, how does one run a hospital in Two Point Hospital? Wait, oh my gosh, is the stethoscope eliminating your microphone? Oh, you know what? We do this every year. Come here, talk to me. Okay. How do we run a hospital? So Two Point Hospital is a game about designing and uh, building 
your own hospital. It's yeah. In a talk directly at my tie. Talk, yeah. This is, this is <laughs> yeah. I've got to look out here, you said. Yeah, no, just look so, straight at the ground. There's a lot of customization. <laughs> there's... Is this not working at all? Yeah, it's great. Uh, You're doing great. Carry, you carry on. on. I'll carry on then. Uh, yeah, a lot of customization, a lot of interesting characters in our world, which uh, with all these different characters, we had to come up with some really interesting illnesses and cures for them. And uh, you have fun in Two Point County exploring different regions and curing people with different ailments. And as you can see on the screen, we've got... Uh, this is real. We actually uh, researched this. It's uh, mm -hmm. a certain anima. And also you can train people... Uh, you can uh, train your doctors to be better, your nurses to be better, do research so you can unlock new wonderful cures. Yeah. You know, He's saying everything, isn't he? Sorry, yeah, I didn't no, know if your mic was great. working. That was yeah. a bit backfilling. Carry yeah, on. Yeah, so, I mean, no, no t tell me about it. Like, what is the sort of late game yeah. uh, sort of experience that you'll be playing through? Because this looks like it's quite deep into the running of a hospital. Yeah, this is later on. So uh, you start off and you're... You, you know, you're, you're researching and you're, you're training up staff, you're diagnosing illnesses, and uh, you're hopefully curing them and making money and then yeah. getting off. I see this malady. Yeah, I see this malady called turtle head. Can you explain oh, yes. a little bit about what yeah. that is? Yes, <laughs> yes. It's, it's when the head becomes so shrunken, it gets stuck in the neck orifice, just pops out slightly, and uh, it has to be uh, extracted. And uh, Mark, how, how's yeah, it Yeah, well, this is uh, something you've <laughs> maybe uh, we've all had, we've all been there. I know. Uh, yeah. This is one where you know a little bit of suction always helps. And yeah. Boop. And, that, and it's gone. And out it comes. <laughs> yeah. Now we I, had to research how to do that. That's actually a, a real illness. For yeah, the, it is. It's real. England. Now I, I had to ask about something that I think every young man has to deal with at some point. What, what is a monobrow infestation? Yeah, well, monobrow is, you know... Follically enhanced. enhanced. Yeah, it's yeah. a problem. We've, We've all been there. Yeah, uh, well, I haven't. But, no, OK. Uh, but, but uh, yeah, it needs to be diagnosed and cured pretty quickly. If it doesn't, it'll fester. And uh, you might shed uh, a bit of hair. And in fact, it, and it can screen. It will actually leave the body, and it needs to be got rid of uh, before yes. the health inspectors arrive. It looks like the monobrows are multiplying in the hospital. They, they breed very, yeah, they're big breeders, the monobrows, yeah, they like, yeah. uh, they like dirty places. Uh, <laughs> disgusting. So you've got to keep your hospital clean and well maintained. Yeah. Otherwise, they're going to breed and you'll have a trouble. I want to ask about sort of how the game evolves over time. Because, you know, Theme Hospital was very mission-based. How yeah. does the experience of running a hospital change as the game goes on? Yeah, so once you've started your first hospital, it's, you know, it's a pretty simple affair. And then you move on through Two Point County. There's different regions. There's a cold this region. This game seems pretty cool. Warm regions with uh, in fact, you know, contagious diseases. And, you know, there's... There's poor there's regions, there's rich well. regions. Yeah. yeah. So we've got volcanoes. Yeah. Effects, yeah. yeah, we've got all sorts of wonderful... Uh, weird effects can happen in different parts of the so world. So you might struggle to manage your hospital empire because yeah. a volcano went off nearby. Yeah, it's about spinning plates, isn't it? You've got everything set up nicely and then something happens. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I'd love to know more information mm -hmm. about when Two Point Hospital is coming out. Well, we're coming out to uh, fall and uh, you can check us out by going onto our Steam page and hopefully wish listing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're coming later in the year. We're told to say. No. <laughs> well, I wonder what wishlisting does really for developers on Steam. Out. Thanks so much for joining me, yeah. Doctor and Doctor. Thank you. Thank I'm guessing it's a stat that they can possible. pull up. <laughs> now, our second Battle Royale game of the afternoon takes a fantasy RPG-esque bent, and you may have even seen it getting streamed on Twitch in the previous week. Let's take a look at High Res's Realm Royale. I've seen gameplay of this game, and it does not look interesting to me. But again, I am not a battle royale player. Play for free now on Steam. Joining me to talk about Realm Royale is the executive producer at High Res Studios. It's Rory Nubro, a.k.a. Dry Bear. Mr. Dry Bear, what separates Realm Royale 
from other types of battle royale games in the genre? It's a good question. So before you go up into the air to determine where you land on the map, you'll actually choose from a list of fantasy classes like mage or hunter or assassin and specify a unique play style before you land. Uh, how do these different classes work? So the engineer will be more about bunkering down, putting up shields, putting down turrets. The assassin will get behind the lines using stealth, use a sniper rifle to take out targets. Yeah. And the warrior will just jump in there throwing axes and being crazy. And you know, in some of the streams that I've watched, it also seemed like there were abilities, not just the loot and find stuff. Can you talk to me about how the ability mechanics work? Once you choose a class, it'll come with a set of abilities, and you'll actually be upgrading these during the match, but it specifies your oh, play yeah. style. And so as you're looting, abilities as well as armor and weapons will come out of the chest. Okay. You'll start equipping that and determining the play style you want, and so you can just really specify. And you know, you, you mentioned this a little bit, I've seen it on stream, talk to me about crafting in the game. I mean, how does crafting work in a game where there's a constantly shrinking play circle? We're really excited about this. So strewn across the map, there are places called forges. And so once you go to the forge, you'll collect shards from disenchanting loot you find as you're going about. And you'll use these shards to start crafting legendary gear, very powerful pieces that everyone will want. Yeah. Once you start the forge, a smokestack will appear above the forge and everyone comes over to like fight. Like a mini objective even. Big team fight. So I know that Realm Royale is currently available for free on Steam, but I hear that you have some goodies that people can check out that are E3 exclusive. That's right. So free on Steam, we're actually out for less than a week now, and we were already number four on Steam charts. And this yeah. week at, at E3, through Mixer, if you stream on Mixer and you're playing, the streamer that gets closest to the Crown Royale will enter into the hype zone, and so everyone will see you on, you'll be featured on the main page of Mixer, and you'll have a chance to win the Jailbird Chicken Skin, which is our first piece of cosmetic. It's a little chicken with like a little Jailbird like, yeah. like prisoner outfit and just box around, it's hilarious. Yeah, and if you don't know the chicken mechanic, seriously, please look it up right now. Rory, thanks so much for joining me on stage to talk about Realm Royale. Once thanks, again, sir. it's for free on Steam right now. Our next game is one that was shown at last year's PC Gaming Show, and Frankie has some updates of what they've been up to. Yes, John, as you may remember, our next game is made by a core team of just two people. It's called Ooblets, and it's a farming and creature collecting indie inspired by Pokemon, Harvest Moon, and Animal Crossing. This fresh trailer features a first look at their unique combat system, along with plenty of cute Ooblets and environments. Let's take a gander. Ooblets. I don't even, what the fudge that I just see. <laughs> now, it wouldn't be a PC gaming show without a dash of strategy, which is why I'm delighted that we get the chance to share with you the next in the Anno games. Let's take a look at Anno 1880. Hmm. Always been interested in the Anno games.
Probably going to add that one to my wish list. Joining me on the stage to talk about it is the executive producer, Burkhart Ratheiser, and community developer, Bastian Thun. Hello, 1880. Gentlemen, welcome to the stage. Or is it 1800? I want to begin right away by asking, you know, for people who haven't seen or experienced the Anno series, what are these types of games like? Yeah, well, uh, Anno 1800 is um, a PC um, only um, real time strategy game. And um, it's kind of uh, mixing um, uh, city building together with um, economic simulation mm -hmm. and naval warfare. And at its core, it's, um, it's a sandbox game. So um, you have a, a, free, um, a vast amount of freedom yeah. to explore, um, to um, explore the world and build huge He's cities. Nervous. And I want you guy. to talk to me a little bit about why the choice of the 19th century for this game. Well, the 19th century, is, it's such an interesting and rich era that um, mm -hmm. there was so much um, um, happening in, in this era. Yeah. So we had uh, two um, industrial revolutions. Uh, yeah. We had uh, major scientific inventions um, uh, and uh, also big social changes and also the, great, the creation of the big imperial empires. So it's yeah. a really rich era. I'm jealous of his glasses. We'll get to see from the like the, 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 the circle on. lenses so it's, and it's then they only get attached at the frame uh, like well, right at the point. You start you those are, with the those first, are awesome. Um, um, kind of medieval settlements yeah. and then it's a kind of kind of a journey through the 19th century so it's a kind of you explore everything that kind of happened in, the, yeah. in, in this rich era and i understand that you have a very unique take on how to work with the community how to gather feedback i was wondering if you could talk to me about what is anno union so last year at Gamescom, when we actually revealed the game, we decided on, you know what, it's pre-alpha, we revealed the game, we invited the community to basically become a part, a member of our, of our uh, development team. So we launched our Anno Union platform, it's a place where we give constant weekly uh, updates on the current yeah. development and invite players to give feedback and basically help us developing the game. Can you give me like an example of exactly how some choices have been steered by the community? So there's a lot of different stuff we did. So like from uh, the feedback we got on our blogs and uh, focus playtests where invited players, we got so much great feedback, uh, which had to completely rebalance the mid and late game of uh, uh, the game. Also, we heavily uh, expanded on core features of the game based on feedback. We said like, okay, that that's re really uh, seems to work. Players like that, so okay. Let's do it, like, uh, improve the quality a little bit even more. Yeah. But um, they can also vote on actual game content. So we had a big vote for an AI opponent in the game, yeah. for a community creation contest where they could create their own island and stuff like this. And, and I understand that some of this mm -hmm. uh, footage that you're sharing right now is pieces that people can go to anno-union.com and vote on right now. Exactly. So right just in time for E3, you can go to anno-union.com, check out. We have a vote up where you can vote on one of five ships in the game. And that's only the first stage, because in the second stage, we will allow you to design your own ship variant. So the winner of that uh, first vote, then you can design, hand in your own design nodes, drawings, 3D models, whatever you like. And the winner of that contest will actually make it into the game. Now, where is the website that people can go to again to get the most information right now? Yeah, just check out anno-union.com. That's basically our big community platform, and we want to, to invite especially strategy gamers, PC players yeah. out there to come help us developing the game, sharing feedback. Just check it out. Well, gentlemen, thank you for joining me on stage to talk about Anno 1800. Our next title is the final battle royale of the night, and Frankie is going to be talking about it, and it's a little bit maybe not what you'd expect. <laughs> Publisher Tiny Build is known for discovering distinctive indie developers and bringing their quirky ideas to the fore, with cluster trucks, speedrunners, and Hello Neighbor among their catalog of hits. And now I'm delighted to be able to bring you the world exclusive reveal of a game developed by Galvanic Games in cooperation with Explosion. Inspired by the cyanide and happiness webcomic, Rapture Rejects is Battle Royale as you've never seen one before, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not. Top down, isometric, cartoony, and basically bonkers. Let's take a look at what happens when the man upstairs makes an epic fail and only beams up the bad people. Introducing Rapture Rejects. Concern everywhere.
Dear God, every day I strive to be closer to your light. I pray that when Judgment Day, that most holiest of days, comes upon us, when you bring all the good people to heaven, that I may live in eternal glory by your side. Amen. Thanks, brah. <laughs> okay, I see you. <laughs> I can't believe we got to show that trailer. That's so great. <laughs> Our final game that we'll be showcasing this evening is from perhaps the most famous stealth action franchise in gaming, the Hitman series. Let's take a look at a brand new trailer from Hitman 2. Welcome to Miami, 47. The innovation race is on its last day and it is down to the wire. I'm excited for the this Providence game. The defectors are Robert and Sierra Knox. A day of high octane thrills and two very public targets. Joining me to talk about Hitman 2 is game director from IO Interactive, Jacob Mickelson. Join me up here, Jacob. Come on out, we gotta talk. Assassination. Hey, Sean. Welcome, Jacob. Thanks for joining me. I mean, right away, tell me, what is Agent 47 doing in Miami? Well, he's there to, uh, yeah, pay a visit to Sharon Robert Knox, who uh, part of the Kronstadt uh, Empire. And yeah, we all know how that ends, right? <laughs> Well, given that it's a Hitman game, I have some hints. And, you know, I always felt like in the Hitman games, the environment was so critical, trying to study and trying to understand it. What are some of the elements in Miami that will show up in Hitman 2? Yeah, well, absolutely. Miami is, uh, I think, it's one of the biggest events we've ever created in, in the game. And uh, in Miami, we have, of course, the race as the centerpiece. Yeah. But being this super high-detailed sandbox, we also go to great lengths to actually create all the surrounding uh, bits and pieces uh, like you have here, backstage area. Of yeah. course, we also have that in Miami. So pits and paddocks, there's an emergency room and so on. So all the facilities needed in order for you to kind of make your own way through the yeah. mission and take advantage of the locations and all the different disguises and items you stumble upon as you yeah. move in closer to your targets. And in terms of the mechanics, I know that there's going to be a lot of the familiar feels, but what are some of the brand new mechanics that are in Hitman? Yeah, some of the new stuff is, uh, for instance, uh, the crowds we saw here in Miami. Uh, yeah. First of all, there's more than ever. 
Yeah, uh, huge. There's, we're close to 2,000 people now in the scenes. And uh, on top of that, we also introduced a new crowd mechanic where you, uh, you can dip into the crowd if you get in trouble. So as long as they are not mm -hmm. uh, fleeing or running away, then they're there for you to hide in, so in case you get chased by guards. Another new thing is the picture-in-picture -picture, uh, mechanic where you get information right. about what's going on other places in the level. So if you're setting up traps and stuff like that, you can kind of keep track of where the important characters are. Uh -huh. And last but not least, we have uh, the fan favorite, right. which is the sniper briefcase uh, is back. But this time, it's not only for, br for sniper rifles, it's also for all the other things you want to carry around, kind of without causing too much attention to yourself. And I want to ask about some of the weapons and the disguises that have been showing up throughout these trailers. Yeah, we go to great lengths. I think the, the, the theme of, uh, of this showing is going to be the fish. It's really a, it's a studio favorite. Uh, we, <laughs> we're having a, a lot of laughs uh, at yeah. that, right? And then, <laughs> And then, of course, you just saw it in the kitchen as a frying pan. So we all know the kitchen is the most dangerous house, uh, room in your house, right? Yeah, so yeah, of course. Also counts in Hitman. And I, I want to ask about some of my favorite content from Hitman, things like elusive targets, limited time events. Will those be making a comeback? Absolutely. So there's still going to be escalations for you to kind of challenge the game in many different ways. Uh, there's going to be uh, challenge packs, uh, mm -hmm. again, new challenge for you. And then, of course, the elusive targets that pop up for a short period of time only. And you have one shot at this or, yeah, oh, yeah. robust. As my final question, the expected question, when does Hitman 2 come out? Hitman 2 comes out November 13, November 13, and if you pre-order right now, you also get access to a new game mode called Sniper Assassin, where you get to play as Agent 47, and also, for the first time in the franchise, you can play along with a friend in the co-op mode. Well, Jacob, thank you so much for coming out. I'm super looking forward to Hitman 2. Thank you. I might be the worst Hitman ever, but I try hard. Now, Jacob, I'm going to thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to escort you off to the right. So you're going to rush off this way because coming in from the left, for the first time ever, vaguely nearby me, it's the co-host Frankie. Come here, Frankie. They let me come down from the balcony for good behavior. Excellent. <laughs> well, Frankie, we did it. We the did. PC Gaming Show is done. Thank you so much for joining us to host this year. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for all of you who came out to the Will Turn and joined us today. It was a blast. Thanks to Twitch chat. I know that everything you said was appropriate and intelligently thought out. <laughs> and of course, this year, we're curating even more great PC games from the Facebook booth in E3 South Hall. Last. And of course, not least, a huge thank you to all our wonderful sponsors who let the PC Gaming Show come back for a fourth straight year. They are High res Studios, Digital Extremes, Archangel Hellfire, Team 17, Stardock Entertainment, Acer, Predator, Improbable, Oculus Rift, Drake's Cakes, Tripwire, Frontier Developments, and Square Enix. We hope you have a wonderful E3 and go play some damn video games. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Welcome back to E3 on Twitch. Oh that gosh. was the PC Gaming Show. Thank you, Day9 and Frankie. Okay. PC Gaming Show is over. There were some cool games on there. I don't remember anything, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, that's fine. You know, just... I wasn't planning on doing the PC Gaming Show anyway, so... I was basically just watching it the rest, like everyone else. Um, oh yeah, NO1800. I, I need to add that to my Steam wish list. Um, I'm, I'm kind of excited for that. Uh, I need to prep for Sony. That's going to be happening in about an hour and ten minutes. So I need to uh, do these new stream thingamabobbers. Uh, so you guys can get more uh, real estate. And then uh, we'll be back probably say 20 to 10 minutes 20 i don't know we'll be back a little bit earlier uh than six o'clock p.m to do the uh the sony stuff talk about sony a little bit uh rot and dante should be back so it'll it'll be good thanks for watching appreciate it see you in about an hour peace